Uh, again, re-emphasizing just how much this can actually vary. Um, with an average of about 150, it took a bit longer when the bite was over um, 80 or hex 80, uh, with an average of about 388 ticks. Um, so taking all of those averages, um, trying to save 1,300, 200 ticks, um, we can cut six characters out uh, from the first thread and alternate between being greater than hex 80 and less than 80 so that we have 80, 81, 80, 81 and we can save about uh, say approximately 1200 12,840 clock ticks or we have the option of cutting seven characters putting them all below hex 80 and uh, saving about 1303 um, in that it actually, in lab conditions, it was able to, was able to replicate that and get um, an exploit working. Like I said, it was not reliable and it's hardly trivial. Um, so how realistic is it? Um, it depends on a lot of conditions. I wouldn't want to try to, try to use it in a, or rely on it in a, uh, a real life based situation, but it can definitely help you identify shorter code paths even if you can't necessarily use the tick counts out of it. Um, and like I said, it, it helps you find a, a decent metric for that. Uh, especially useful on SMP and multi-core machines where um, things can run concurrently um, as opposed to having to use the schedule and stuff. An um, interesting thing about this technique, however, is that when dealing with Linux threads and uh, Linux capabilities, um, Linux threads didn't properly, properly implement POSIX threads uh, it actually, uh, each thread was kind of treated as its own process, so it was actually able to have, um, you could have one thread running as root and one running as nobody, and have the shared data structure between them, and actually uh, use that to, you could have a completely hardened, uh, privileged thread running, and then have one in the uh, nobody context that hasn't had its code audited quite as well, or whatever that causes, uh, issues in it and that can actually cause the other thread to mess up which in turn can lead to privilege escalation or you know um, privilege escalation of some kind um, although Linux threads isn't even really used anymore it's been replaced by NPTL so you're not going to find it in a whole lot of places but it's still something to keep an eye out for um, when, you're, when you're doing pen tests or, or whatnot. however Linux capabilities are uh, more common. You do see them in daemons here and there, and they're specifically per thread. So you can actually have uh, you have another instance where one thread can can uh, interfere with another thread and cause it to um, interfere with another thread and cause it to um, gain capabilities or privileges, uh, even though the other thread was doing everything right. Um, so in conclusion, there's more than one way to accomplish things. You don't always have to result or uh, do the, uh, the out-of-the-box out or known method. Uh, there's, like I said, I had to cut some time. Um, I had to cut some slides out of this just to be able to, to get it within uh, reasonably within scope of the time limit. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you want to talk about uh, any of this or anything, feel free to find me um, or it's, they're in the paper as well. Uh, there's at least two more listed in here. Uh, one was where you had a structure that ended up with multiple pointers all. Um, you had pointer plus offset, and that pointer pointed to the beginning of the structure, and then you had another pointer in the structure that, uh, that all ended up pointing to the same place, and you could actually overwrite an injur, which was later used in a, in a loop and caused a stack overflow. Um, the biggest thing to, to keep in mind is that the heap is persistent and is shared and because of this uh, you can actually exploit that condition. Threading provides um, a really interesting way for taking code that, um, for instance, under, under normal circumstances in this code base, I couldn't cause um, another free to be injected of another chunk in between the two, but threading allowed me to actually accomplish that. Um, and Slides are pretty hard to fit code into. I don't. I haven't found a good way to do it. Are there any questions?
Okay, I guess not. Um, 